Hello and welcome to Module 1. In Module 1 we are going to look at an overview of the ETL process. So we'll take a look at what extracting, transforming, and loading means. Uh, we'll take a look at what tools we're going to use uh, in the course to, uh, to accomplish that. And we'll show some um, simple demonstrations of how how the ETL process works. So this module should be a, a nice little introduction to not only uh, the ETL process but also just getting used to getting you used to uh, working through modules. So let's get started. ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. And what it means of course is that you extract data from one place you make changes to the data as necessary <clears throat> and then you load that data into its new home, its new location. To uh, give an example of that, I'll um, pull up SQL Server Management Studio and show the contents of two different databases. Now these databases are ones that we will be working throughout the course. I'm going to execute the code that makes the connection I'm using right now, connection 52, um, connect to the SQL Server database engine and focus on the PUBS database. PUBS is a, a Microsoft database, uh, play database they made long, uh, that was made long ago and has been used for a very long time. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and select data from the titles table. And you can see this is just typical data about titles of books that are available for sale. Now, throughout the course, we'll be working with demonstrations that kind of highlight uh, some examples of taking the data from pubs and transforming it into data that will be loaded into the data warehouse called pub sales. So this is a data warehouse that we'll be making a little later on and we'll be just using for examples. The um, select statement here shows an example of what, oops, I need to focus on the database, I'll run both of those, what the data is going to look like when it gets to the data warehouse. And you can see it's a, well actually I'll run both of them and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> you can see that there's some differences. I've extracted data from this first data set uh, and I've loaded it into this second data set, this result set. In the first there are a number of columns that I may not have found useful such as I didn't feel advance was useful or royalties or year date sales or notes. You may not find that somewhat odd that we would leave some things out, but in general not everything is really ready for um, your reports or even accurate. For example, if you were to look more closely at year-to-date sales, you'd find that this has been static data for a very long time and doesn't actually add up to the information in the sales table. Something is wrong with that. The royalty may be interesting about what the percentage of royalty an author gets uh, for a particular title but may not be applicable to the type of reports that you want. And certainly notes may be useful at some point in time but perhaps not at this point in time. Just because it exists in the transaction processing database or some other source doesn't mean you have to take it with you. Remember we're not talking about deleting the the original data. We're just talking about going through and using it. Um, using some of the data to make a report worthy structure, a repository of data for our reports. I've also gone ahead and taken the published uh, published date, the, the book that the date uh, the book the date that the book was published. Now the couple other things to note. First of all, the column names have been transformed. Instead of being title underscore ID, 
with that title ID. Instead of just being title, I have title name. Instead of just being type, I have type name. Publisher key instead of the publisher ID. This will reference a, another table. And publisher date key does the same thing. And the unit price has now been, um, or excuse me, the price has now been called title price. So we've made some changes, made things look a little bit more modern, more consistent, uh, also a little clearer about exactly what you're seeing. So it's not uh, um, just a, a type, it's a, a type of title. In addition to that, we've used a, pro, um, a technique known as surrogate keys. Surrogate keys are a typical um, addition to any data warehouse table. Um, so we see the use of that here and also the use of it on the publisher key and the date key, in which case we're a reference to surrogate keys instead of the original or natural keys it's sometimes called. All databases used to use a combination of, like in this case, the type and then some numer uh, numeric value. The problem with that was proven when people started making changes to the type later on and noticing that their numbering system didn't line up anymore. So not very flexible. Speaking of the type, another transformation we've made is we've gone through and we've changed business to uppercase. Mod cook has become modern cooking, much easier to understand what it means. Popular comp is popular, let's see, computing and uh, and so on. So this um, this is the part of the transformation process. Getting it, getting your data to go from this to this, getting it all set up. You transform it and then load it into your data warehouse, nice and clean and transformed. So yes, that is uh, the process, and that's what extraction, uh, extracting, transforming, and loading is all about. Next, we're going to go ahead and take a, uh, take a look at more specific examples of how the process is done. See you there.